ericmother.com. Let's take a look at the charts you provided, and this is on the back of our discussion about making sure that when we begin a new month, that we start going back and taking a look at the big picture view of the charts from the main markets to the sectors to even the stocks, because stocks are going to pull back, and all we need is one month of rest. And so I was, I was trying to you know, bring across the point that month to month we need to be aware of where the charts are set are settling at or how things are playing out because the monthly change or the change in the monthly energy can sometimes actually take things in a different direction so in your in response to those videos this is the charts that you sent me and i'm gonna go through the chart one by one so we can take a look at your comments and i'm gonna layer that with my own personal comments so we begin here with the Brazilian market and I believe this is when you are going through the charts trying to understand what the big picture looks like in terms of world market view and also I see that you have some sector charts. So here we have the Brazilian market, it's the beginning of December 2017 and we want to take a look at what the world view is so we can have a view of what to expect from the stocks we are trading. Remember we know that ultimately we are I guess tied, we are tie down or our results in the market are 100% if not 75% tied down to the general market. So for example if you take a look at the Brazilian market during this period here in 08 into 09 when the entire world complex was lower of course the stocks in the Brazilian market were down substantially and as they recovered as the general market in Brazil the, as the Bovespa recovered we know that stocks recovered and this period here was obviously choppy to down for most Brazilian market stocks and since the lows of early 2016 we've seen the resurgence of Brazilian stocks to the upside why because the market has been trending higher so it makes sense to understand where we are in the cycle because if we don't get that correct then definitely we are going to struggle in trying to find ideas that move in the direction we want now of course of course trying to capture or trying to understand trying to analyze trying to predict where markets are going is always going to be a, an ongoing task it's always going to be one of those things that we'll never solve but we, sh we can have a sense based on how the charts are looking what to expect so here we begin with the brazilian market these are your charts and i'm just going to take a look here and of course we can see your in blue you have your observations we can see here you're talking about the RSI coiling down which is what is happening here but we see with the beginning of the month Brazilian market as of right now end of close end of trade for G December 4th we are seeing a 1% move because US markets were also up nicely so we can see that it is doing its best to hold on this line. My takeaway here is yes, if the market can hold th this lows line or the blue line and bounce here, and if it can also bounce above this line here, which was a sell signal. Let me see whether I can show that. This was a sell off the highs in 2010. It broke down here off the highs of 2007. Was support here, which is this lows. So back above the line with uniform action entry there support on the line entry there and we've been we've been showing resistance here which is this top and this top we managed to move above it which is here and now we want to hold if this holds then the conclusion is that we are seeing the Brazilian market looking like it wants to bounce now of course we can see that and if we break below that line then we can expect there to be downside pressure on at least the Brazilian market. If we see one market break, we start being sensitive to other markets catching the same cold. So pretty much I do agree with your observations. So I'm just in agreement with the observations there. And of course if it breaks, we don't know where it's going to find support. Once it breaks, if it breaks, we have to wait for the monthly chart to turn positive before we can start looking for why 
it is finding support wherever it would find support. So that is pretty much a break would suggest lower prices. And once it breaks, we have to wait for the market to give us levels where we can find support. So the target on the downside is an unknown in my opinion. And one thing I should point out here is if the market can clear the recent monthly closing high, as far as the Brazilian market is concerned, that would be actually very powerful. In other words, a breakout, and especially if the RSI moves above 69.1, we know that that's going to be telling us that the market is very strong. And we can see that as we, far as we can see here, the MACD or the default MACD is already trading at three-year highs. That would give us a minimum requirement would be met in terms of the MACD. And so um, the MACD holding weight it is currently trading at here, if the RSI can break out and move above 69.1, that would be a sign of a strong market. So there's a possibility that it can find support and eventually break out, which is what the bulls want to see. The next chart is the Brazilian market, the Bovespa weekly, which you provide. And let me see here what you're saying. You can say RSI failed to move above res the brown resistance line. All right, so I see what you're saying here. This short-term resistance on this line. Not enough rest. Well, on the weekly, we've had enough rest because this is more than two weeks of rest. This is a weekly chart. So if we can break out, that's going to be after a minimum weekly rest. Keep in mind, the monthly has already rested for one month. Now, what that would also mean is we can, you know, monitor the close here on a weekly closing basis. That is just a tad bit below. I think it's at 70. I think it's at about just under 77,000 is the close right here. That would be the next weekly breakout level. Now, what I can see from this is we are looking at the possibility if we take a look at the prior short term breakout. So let me see. So this line right here. This is where it broke out. And that gives us this beginning of this move here. Somewhere there. And I think what's happening is the stock is, or the market is coming there. The Brazilian market is coming to test that level right there. Looks like it might hold. And if it can hold that level right there that is where we can expect support seems like this is where we can expect logical support based on the fact that it goes back to the entry line or to the entry level that began the move here which is this entry here so what it is doing right now to me looks like good action if it can continue holding so what's the takeaway Looks like this is a market on the monthly and the weekly that is more than likely pointing up. At the very worst, it's a sideways market. Conclusion here, it's not suggesting a major drop in world markets as of right now. Let's take a look at the world market in, by the view, by viewing the French market, the French CAC. We can see that it would need to clear the recent monthly closing high for this market to be a breakaway market with momentum to the upside. And yes, I can see here that it's been struggling to hold above this line here, a line that was also resistance during those highs somewhere there. Actually, it's right here. So we're talking about this resistance here off that high, and we've been bumping heads with the same line. So until we can move above this line, the blue line, we are looking at a market that on a monthly basis could actually eventually crack if this line cannot be clear to the upside. Now, there's also the view that I have been watching here is the fact that we were rejected at the RSI 69.1 was not a good sign. So 69.1, that was not a good sign, the rejection right there. So something, you know, long term could be a problem just like it was a problem here of that high. And of course, ultimately, we go on to 
do this all right so long term I say it's a, it's a market that needs to hold and with the first couple of days for December it looks okay because this line might hold and your brown line might also hold and of course the brown line goes back to the break in 2007 here the break here in 2001 2002 and we can see that resistance here of that high uniform activity here of that high now we've moved above that line and this is becoming support so again another market long term that looks to be sideways at the very worst right now unless this market can also break down break down below those two lines so stability is all we need to give us confidence that we can still play the market for a bullish move to the upside of course if this market is to is to be a true leader to the upside it would have to go back above 69.1 it would have to break out in price as far as the monthly chart is concerned if we take a look at the weekly chart here for the French market what we see here is potential for support on that line right there again we see another market that is doing its best to hold and if it can hold that's another indication of at the very least sideways to bullish market or even sideways so it looks like here the more we look at these charts we are seeing markets hold where they where, where they should hold now of course if this market was to break down then it would need to break down below this line here this line connecting RSI lows and if you draw that line that way you can still see that it is bouncing on the line so as long as it is holding on that line when we can assume here as long as that is holding that this is a market that is stable and all we need is a stable market to be aggressive buyers of bullish candidates one thing I do point I can see here just for the sake of using this line here the prior break if we extend this line you can see that it hit recently hit that line and pull back that was also rejection at the 69.1 level so if you are watching that at the time that was indication of resistance somewhere here but now it's come back to support so the most recent action is support so we have to assume that that is what is in play now let's not also underestimate if this support line is going to hold right there and again I can draw it a little bit different by connecting the lows like that if this line is to hold then that means that more than likely once you bounce above the RSI 50 level chances are it is going to test the highs if not break above the highs as long as the support on the weekly remains true so as long as this line is holding it is supporting finding support above RSI 50 it suggests that it is gonna test the highs or potentially break above recent highs take a look at the Nasdaq monthly and here I do agree with your observations pretty much with the Nasdaq holding its RSI well above 69.1 we conclude that this market is sideways to bullish suggesting that we can still be looking to own US market related breakouts take a look at the Nasdaq weekly and we can see here that I think while you are recording this or you made this observation the market had not re responded with a 1% drop today being a Monday for December 4th right now we are seeing the Nasdaq pull back below 69.1 on the weekly but net net given the strength on the monthly and let's say we take this line here until we break below this line I still think that the market as far as the weekly for the Nasdaq continues to be sideways to bullish as long as we are holding for example this obvious weekly support potential support line so yes it can pull back but we haven't seen any major break so so in my opinion the market still remains sideways to bullish even as seen on this Nasdaq weekly chart 
if we take a look at the CRB index, we can see that if it can clear the recent monthly closing high, if the price can clear the recent monthly closing highs, going back even to 2016, and if the RSI can continue building on this breakout attempt, and the fact that the MACDs are showing that they are close to breaking out. So let me see the MACDs here. We can see that the MACDs are close to three year highs. So right there, we can see that from mid 2014, mid 2015, 2016, we are past mid 2017. So that's, that's three years. So if the RSI can continue building on this, this is a logical entry level, assuming the monthly breakout can take place. So that RSI is showing signs of moving to three year highs. We can see here that the MACDs are at least at three year highs, close to it on this MACD time frame. So that meets the minimum requirements for the ultimate Moade breakout. No question about that. So that's the bullish view. Now, I see another potential view, which might actually be not as encouraging, depending on which way it decides to go. I see possibility of resistance around here, based on this line here, which was a break. Now that break, the break there, brings us off the highs of 2014. What we do is we take that information and draw our uniformity resistance line. And you can see that the, the market is down slightly at the beginning of December. Potentially because it is trying to respect this line. So we have a make or break situation. Either we break out above the red line and stage an ultimate Moade breakout which would be very bullish or we confirm resistance here which makes this a high and we roll over in terms of price and that is something we are going to have to wait and see what direction the market wants to take so now the other view is we can draw a line connecting the lows here in 1999 through these lows and it connects to these points here here and here and so the reason why we can draw this through this level here is because this is uniform action so we can draw trend lines on the RSI from time to time through for example this area here because of the uniform action and we can see that uniform action is also a visual reason why the market found a flaw in 2009 after the bear market and we saw a recovery in price and that recovery is because of this uniform action also because we've adjusted this trend line it makes more sense because it gives us the support low there of that low support low on the line of that low support here of this low and then we get a break right there that break brought us lower and what we can do is extend the blue line and now we can see that the market is going to have to decide whether it wants to show resistance there if it shows resistance then that means we drift lower or the market might decide to clear the blue line and now we start surging upwards that is something the market is going to have to decide and don't forget the previous red line so those two levels are either those two lines are either going to be resistance or they are going to be breakout levels we're going to have to wait for the market to tell us which way it wants to select now i do agree with your observations here that this was a good breakout which is this price breakout here and that was in 2000 2003 
and that breakout there based on those comments was where we see that the stock or the index the commodity index the CRB broke out above three-year highs on the RSI price breakout we can also see that that corresponds with the MACD so the period we are talking about is this period right here right there we can see that our MACDs were also moving to fresh highs fresh three-year highs in that period both MACDs were moving to fresh three-year highs RSI was breaking out price was breaking out and because it met the minimum requirements for the ultimate more the breakout we can see that from here we had a fantastic run as far as commodities are concerned for many years after the breakout here so in other words if we can get another ultimate mother breakout in the current market that might suggest that we might be looking at the potential for an, another move to the upside should the market clear that line right there and the previous resistance line the back test line so I've changed colors here so let me so again the market would need to clear level number one here and level number two which is the back test line if it can clear those two lines then there's a this would be a reason to be aggressive to the upside as far as commodities are concerned now if we take a look at the weekly the weekly doesn't look very encouraging and I can see here that we, this is correct analysis because this was the break of 2014 on the weekly it became double top resistance here of those highs resistance here close to a double top of the highs there and now we are seeing another double top so it might be that we are looking at a market that is going to struggle so given this it means that we should be very careful with the commodities because as a group as long as this is a double top on the weekly uniformity line this is a market we should avoid for now because we don't see any signs of a breakout actually the only thing we see is a break our breakdown or resistance suggesting that we should be looking at a market here that is sideways to down which means we should avoid this area of the stock market for now until it can clear the uniformity resistance line so that is actually very helpful so we know that we should avoid commodities for now because of this development where we are seeing double top rejection and that's why we should always look at the long-term picture for sector charts because this is a good visual sign that the commodity space is not looking to go anywhere anytime soon so when we are looking for ideas and we see a commodity stock we know that we should avoid it for now let's take a look at the German market and here I see this is correct rejection at the 69.1 threshold which is why it's stalled here and we can see here that there's a possibility that if it breaks out if it can break out and move above 69.1 then that would be bullish price breakout on the monthly would be great for bulls RSI moving back above 69.1 would also be a sign of a strong market if and when it happens right now we are beginning the month with a little bit of a positive gain so we're not necessarily breaking down but we should also be very vigilant the fact that we see resistance here on the blue line long term if we see this market starting to roll over and drifting lower we should suspect that this is because over time it has already given us a major turn point to the downside so it can build and break out yes but once it starts losing ground here we should be sensitive to the idea of lower prices because of the monthly chart rejection at 69.1 and recent rejection on the blue line back test failure so as long as the monthly chart is positive for the month we at least know the market is safe in other words it is sideways at worst could even turn into a bullish breakout as long as the monthly is, is positive but if we turn negative for the month and start pointing down that might not be a good sign given that the long-term monthly charts here don't look very attractive.
take a look at the weekly chart here and we can see that the blue line was a breakout on the weekly for the German market and we can use that even in the current market weekly chart breakout here nice breakout in price the market hasn't looked back since then price breakout RSI breakout we take that RSI breakout level and we can use it because if we extend the breakout with a uniformity line there we can see that once we recapture back above the line here we start moving higher and the point is right now we are bouncing back above that line as long as that is offering support then we conclude that this market as of right now looks to be sideways to bullish as long as the weekly support continues on that line there now as far as the comments here of no rest yes we've seen more than two weeks of rest since the close there so any breakout after that is gonna be after we've seen two weeks of rest more than two weeks of rest so that is that is incorrect would like to see that any breakout is now valid it's gonna give us a valid breakout because it's been more than two weeks since the weekly closing high there also as far as the recent highs here are concerned this is uniform activity rejection as you mentioned there and also rejection at the 69.1 level with uniform action so that is correct and there's also a line connecting the prior break line if you draw it like this and extend it out you can see at the highs the market came back to back test that line and failed which gave us the short term highs there but right now what we are looking at here is is support all remember all we want is world markets to be stable to bullish here we see potential for support telling us that we can still look to, for markets to be sideways to bullish as long as nothing major has broken down the FTSE monthly chart has been one of the world markets chart that has been on the bearish side on the long-term monthly view because of this top side resistance line on the monthly we can see that it is still showing resistance over the last couple of months so over time as long as it is unable to move above this line this becomes a problem for the London market or the FTSE and at the same time if we can clear this level here that would be very very bullish if the market can clear that line that would actually ignite a very strong move to the upside but right now lots of resistance it's something I've been watching for potential uh, you know situation where the market if it was to break this lows here for example and start testing lows after seeing all these resistance levels here I would suspect that the major high has been recorded also it is consistent with your observations that this is where you can expect resistance based on the break of this line here and that's absolutely consistent with the break of the highs of 2007 late 2007 before the big drop of 2008 2009 and right now again this has been resistance 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 so the long-term monthly chart for the FTSE remains a problem but right now it is not necessarily breaking down and you can see this on the weekly let's take a look at the weekly and as you point out the weekly is at support and so as long as it's holding this support line both lines are valid the blue line and the red line I have to say good job on the lines those lines do make a lot of sense based on the fact that the blue line broke breakout took place here or broke out which is this entry market is higher since and it has been using the blue line for support every time it finds successful support on the blue line the market recovered to new highs and here if it can co continue holding that suggests that it might actually test the highs if not break through the, the recent weekly closing highs so yes there is a good chance that if that line this line here can continue holding that this market might actually be due for a move higher 
at the same time if we go on to break below that line that's gonna be a major or if we break below those two lines the red and the blue that's gonna be a major sell signal and a bad sign for world markets take a look at the Dow monthly Dow monthly is straightforward the monthly continues to be sideways to bullish because we know that it is still showing strength it's very powerful move RSI continues to be above 69.1 and even the blue line that you've drawn here has yet to be broken so we are still in a market that still remains very strong so the takeaway here is this market still encourages us to be bullish as long as the the main trend in the market is sideways at worst bullish at best so the Dow here is pretty much very straightforward continues to hold nice bullish levels which means that we can still be buying breakouts as long as they meet our minimum requirements this is also true with the Dow weekly which also continues holding above 69.1 again another reason why we should still be bullish and also we can see that week to week this is week number two or number three number three since the most recent weekly breakout where we had seen two weeks of rest so we saw two weeks of rest and the two weeks of rest that I'm talking about are here this week and this week and then the market broke out on week number four so that means that this is fresh legs so the market on a weekly chart continues to be suggesting that we can still be bullish because the market is sideways it is stable or it is outright bullish if we take a look at the nifty now we can see the nifty is a little bit different looks like here this could be a double top rejection at the 69.1 threshold keep in mind we are very early on in the month so let's not rush to conclusion but this looks like if it if this trend continues this is a change in sentiment a break of the blue line also and by the blue line I'm talking about the line connecting recent lows on the monthly this line right here if this line continues cracking that is not a good sign so that's something to watch here if you know if you own securities especially stocks in the Indian market here eh, it doesn't mean that you have to sell them but you have to be sensitive to the idea that the market could be breaking down so the the safest thing for the market to do from a bullish perspective is bulls would like the market to hold hold the current line here if it can hold here turn positive for the month and break out in price that's exactly what the bulls want to see at the same time those who are bearish and would like to see the market drop they must be excited to see the market come off the 69.1 level and now beginning to show signs of cracking so here's a market that is pretty much giving a warning sign that at this rate it can easily trend lower so one has to be very protective of capital especially if a breakout you own starts breaking down and failing to hold the breakout level you want to get out because if the market breaks down and a stock you own cannot break out you want to get out of any stocks that are struggling to hold key levels because that might be also a sign that the market is going to take most stocks lower so I agree with the comments there 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 this comment here is the one I'm not sure because we don't know where the market can find support see we we have to wait for the market to give us support and then we can go understand why the support will take place so if it breaks down we don't know where support could take place support could take place around the 50 support could take place around 69.1 support could take place below 50 or maybe at 38.2 we don't know so rather than to predetermine where the market is going to find support let's wait and see if it breaks down at some point the market would give us a reason for why it would find support 
And a good example of this is, let me give you why we don't predetermine the market next support level ahead of time. You see this break here? So there was a wedge here. And the market broke out of that wedge, which is the beginning of 2017. It could be that the market comes back to test the breakout point. We don't know. This breakout, if we draw our uniformity line, the market could come back to test that line. And the thing is, we don't know. So if we find the market holding support here or on the red line, then, then that is when we can act and we can use that. But until we see support, we don't know where the market could find support. Take a look at the Nifty Weekly. And here we can see definite signs of negative divergence. Also rejection with uniform activity at 69.1. Not a good sign. So we have to see where the market finds support. But right now it looks like it is pointing down. And again, a, another layer of reason why we have to be very cautious as far as Indian stocks are concerned. Because the market there is looking like it is in a pullback mode. At some point, if it starts turning positive for the week, then we can start looking for why it is finding support. If we see that it is finding support in a critical level, if the support looks solid, then is when we can start being at least we can expect the market again to be back to sideways to bullish market. Right now, based on the weekly and monthly chart, looks like we are looking at a market that is, as of right now, sideways to down, based on the conclusion of the weekly and the monthly chart analysis that we, we have right now. And again, if the market was to turn positive and find support on the line here, then yes, that would be a logical support level. But until we can find that the market finds its own support, we don't know where the market can find support because the market always has more than one critical level that where it can go to and find support. So we wait for the market to tell us. And the only way it can tell us is with a positive move on a weekly chart. For example, if it turns positive and stays positive this week, then that means that this line is holding and that's a good enough line. Otherwise, we'll have to wait for the market to tell us when it starts finding its own floor, its own support. Now, as far as the comment here about the uniformity line, that you couldn't find it, well, I would, I would say my uniformity line can be drawn by the breakout. So just figure out where the market started moving higher. There is a line right there, happens to be around the RSI 50 level. And we can see that this level there, this breakout in 2017 brought the market higher. Market's been higher since. We take that information and draw a line. This line happens to be above the 50 RSI level. So that is a trend line based on uniformity that I could use in response to your observation here about the uniformity line. So I would expect that is one layer if the market finds support around RSI 50 I would anticipate that that is because of this uniformity support line and of course don't forget that this is really short term because we haven't broken any major trend line for example the weekly chart has yet to break this trend so it's not like we are turning outright bearish because really on the weekly chart we haven't seen a major break of a major trend line yet all we are doing is turning cautious. And again, we've seen more than two weeks of rest. The weekly close is right here, just under 10,500. We've had more than two weeks of rest since then. So any breakout now would be a fresh breakout. And yes, I do agree here that the next support might be the black line, which is where we have the uniformity, maybe, maybe not. Or, ultimately, this could be support. We don't know. The market has many options of where to find support. But we also know that if it breaks all those support levels, if it breaks down below all those support levels, that would not be a good development as far as long-term picture for the market is concerned.
like the Dow, we are looking at the Nikkei, and the Japanese market continues to be bullish to stable based on the monthly chart because of the fact that it is trading above 69.1. Now, one thing here we can see that if we take a look at this line here and extend it out, it should be something like that. We are looking at the potential that this might actually end up being resistance. But as long as it is above 69.1, this is the controlling factor. Now, if we roll over, drop back below 69.1, after confirming resistance on this back test here, then that might suggest a short term high. So again, as long as it is above 69.1, we assume the market is sideways to bullish. If it fails to hold above 69.1, confirming resistance here, then that might not be a good sign as far as month to month direction for the Nifty is concerned. Take a look at the weekly chart and we can see after two weeks of rest the Nikkei actually broke out last week so there was a breakout after two weeks of rest there so that's a good breakout as long as it can hold above the prior weekly closing high RSI continues to be good because RSI continues to hold above 69.1 now as far as the observations of negative divergence well, the over overriding factor is the fact that it is above 69.1. That is, now that what I'm trying to say is that we try not to use negative divergence as long as a market is above 69.1 because the prevailing strength is to the upside. Anything above 69.1 means that all other considerations are secondary. So even though we are seeing yes that could this could eventually stall it but the overriding factor here is the 69.1 threshold for example it would be similar to this period here slight negative divergence but that's not the high the high is negative divergence and rejection at 69.1 so that rejection at 69.1 is the key. And also the negative divergence and failure to move above 69.1 is why this is a more reliable top than the prior top here. So right now the RSI is above 69.1, which means in other words, we cannot use negative divergence. Take a look at the Canadian market. And we are beginning the month of December here, and this could be a problem now that the RSI is back below 69.1 with uniform action. That is correct. That's a problem right there. That's correct. So, as long as we are seeing this rejection on the monthly chart, it's not a good sign. But if it can climb back above 69.1 on the monthly, then that corrects that mistake. Now, as far as the MACD is concerned, you know, the thing about the MACD is got to be a little bit careful. The MACD can be, the MACD, in my opinion, is not as reliable as the RSI. I would always default to the RSI when there is a conflict. Now, one can argue that prices have been going higher, but the MACD did not make a, a higher high. And so that negative divergence could actually be something to look at as being a negative divergence, negative, um, a negative development in that prices improved, but the RSI did not, con the MAC did not confirm that. But the key here, frankly, is the RSI's failure to hold above 69.1. Now, it would be similar, let's say, to this period here, where there is uniform activity, like here, right there. Uniform activity rejection when trying to move above 69.1. One other observation. Take a look at the extension of this line. Now, this line was a major break line because the break of this line was consistent with the 
break before the big drop of 2008 into early 2009, this huge bear market. And we can see because of that break right here, what we can do is extend that line. Once we extend it, you can see it comes back and gives us negative, no, it gives us rejection, backtest failure here, which is off that high. Now, we can do the same thing in the current market, which is draw a line connecting lows. This line gives us the break here of the highs of 15. We take a drop from there. We take that line and extend it. And we can see that it is showing two rejections here in early 2017 and here in late 2017. So it could be long term, the Canadian market is starting to show signs of cracking. The key is whether or not it can A, hold above this line, which would be bullish, or hold above the 69.1, which would be bullish, if it can hold, or if it continues trading below 69.1, then that would be bearish. Right now, it is below 69.1 at the beginning of December. So we have to assume as far as the Canadian market is concerned, it is pointing sideways to down. If you take a look at the Canadian market, yes, we are seeing uniform activity rejection based on your comments there. And this is clearly here, evident. Not good. The last time we showed resistance on the line here was the top right there. Let me sh make sure, okay, that top right there. And then the break here of the highs there, which was consistent with a trend break. This trend break here. So right now the Canadian market not looking very, very healthy. I also propose another line, which is the top side RSI resistance line. And you can see that if you take the tops, Going back to 2014 here, it connects to the highs there and the recent weekly, weekly highs there, suggesting yet another layer of analysis that is pointing to a market that is sideways to down given the monthly chart look and the weekly chart look. And again, if it breaks, the way it looks like, as, as relates to your observation of the next support line is we don't know where the next support line would be. Now, of course, logic would say that if it can come back and test the line here and find support just like it did during the recent pullback. In other words, if it can come back and find support here on this level, that would be good support. But we don't know where it's going to find support. It might su find support before that at the same time, it might come back to this level and break below it. So we don't know that it's going to come and bounce anywhere in this way or break below here. So we wait for the market to tell us. And that's why we go back and take a look at the charts frequently because at some point there will be support. Where the support will come, we don't know. And here, we can see that your observation that we haven't had enough rest is correct because if we drill down and take a look at a closer view from eight eight weeks to no eight years to two years we can see that we've only had this is week number two of the breakout of the of the week number two since the weekly closing high so we would need it to rest for another week this week and potentially if possible any breakout after this week would have given us the required two weeks of rest. So it could be that maybe the stock is playing games before a future breakout, we don't know. But the monthly chart continues to be pointing to a market that is more than likely looking to point down. So as far as the Canadian market is concerned, we are looking at a market that is more and more pointing down. If we take a look at the daily, the daily could actually be coming back to support. 
so we take a look at the daily here there's this line I will draw it like that if it can find support back above the blue line then that's gonna be good support We've already seen that it is gone below the blue line and back above it here for that low. All it needs now is to bounce back above the blue line here. If it can do it, then this is going to be where it stops going down. And that's why I keep saying that we don't know where it finds a flaw until we see it. We don't know where. We have to see evidence of support before we can. In other words, we shouldn't predetermine where the market is going. We should let the market tell us what it is doing moment to moment. Also, there is a line connecting RSI lows that is coming in play. We haven't broken this line yet. So the, if the market has a chance, if it wants to, to bounce on this line and everything would be still a market that is stable. So if the market can bounce on this line and start coiling up, we are still looking at a market that is healthy. We are trading well above the 50-day moving average. So the market is not as bad if we take a look at the daily chart. Now, of course, if we go on to break below these two lines, then that would be not a good development for those who are bullish. Take a look at the hourly. We can see that the hourly was showing topside resistance during the most recent highs or breakout attempt here. So the pullback has only made sense because of re rejection here. So that line is what stalled the recent breakout attempt. But if we take a look at where the market started moving high, which is this movement here of the lows, we can draw a line from here, which is our uniformity, potential uniformity support. The market is right there sitting on the line. So hour to hour, if this line can hold, then the market should be still stable to bullish. If the hourly and the weekly, no, if the daily chart can hold, if the hourly chart can hold, the Canadian market would still be sideways to bullish if those two can hold. So the weekly and the monthly look a little bit bearish, but the internal charts of the daily and the weekly show that it is still within potential for support if the support on the daily and the weekly hold, this market could actually recover. So in conclusion, if you take a look at all the markets we looked at, generally speaking, worldwide markets are sideways to bullish, with some markets showing potential for break. But generally, we are looking at markets for the most part on average that are sideways to bullish, which means that our month-to-month -month analysis at the beginning of December tells us that we can still continue being bullish until we see major trend, major reversals, major markets coming off the 69.1 threshold. We have no choice but to take the idea for now that markets are sideways to bullish, which means that we can also play the market from a bullish point of view. If we see something breaking out that meets our minimum requirement, we can still be buying those because markets have yet, as of right now, to break down. Eric Mwadith, Mwadith.com, as always, good luck, peace, and blessings. E-A-C-S. Yes. Mwah. Woo.